Guys, there's a lot of scary stuff happening in China economically. In this video, I'm going to break down the truths and facts about China. And I will also address your concerns on how this could affect the U.S. and the rest of the world. First things we need to talk about is the stock market in China, the Shanghai Index. This is the last five years, guys. It has only gone up 6.84%. Remember, news follows the stock price. We say this all the time. Because the market has not been good for China, now the story is about here is why it's bad. Just like when Meta was at sub-150 down to $88 per share, everyone was saying why that justified. When Google was down to $85 a share, why it was justified. But as a true value investor, when stocks are down, it is a time to look and say, is there opportunity here that's being overlooked? So a market being down doesn't tell me that things are bad. It just tells me there might've been overvaluation later and the, the tide might've shifted on that certain index for the time being, but that doesn't mean forever. Remember, Japan had a massive run up in the late, nine, late 80s and they have not seen that peak since then, but now it's a country that Warren Buffett's investing a lot of money into as we speak. One thing I never thought I would say, China has a population decline problem. Two years in a row now of population decline. And this is according to data at the, war, at the United Nations. They're expected to go from this peak of 1.4 billion, a little over, to guys, look at this number. Towards the 2100, under 800 million. That's a population decline. Now, that can be scary. People don't like that. People are moving out of China. They're moving to other areas. But I don't necessarily believe that just because people are leaving, it means bad economic times ahead. The population growth has greatly decreased and gone in the negative. But let me show you China's GDP growth and their per capita GDP, which is basically the per year income over the last 20 years. Over the last 20 years, the top line here is GDP of China in US dollars. Keeps on going up. It never had a decline, guys. I repeat, it has never had a decline. Down here is the GDP. It's all green. Has it slowed? Yeah, but as an economy gets bigger and bigger, it will slow just like our economy. And down here is the per capita GDP. How much is every person contributing? Guys, this is up 10X in the last 20 years. 10 times growth from $1,289 per person to $12,800 per person. Again, no decline yet. Has there been a flattening in the last few years? Absolutely, but no decline yet. I wanna see that the per capita GDP is growing and it will. Here in the US, we're upwards of 70,000 plus per capita in GDP. This is 12,800. We are six times larger per person than China is, per person. I'm not one of those people who's afraid of China being the largest economy in the world. At the end of the day, they have a billion and a half people. All they have to do is produce just a little bit more money and their economy is gonna be larger in total GDP than ours. Because as they grow per person, the total economy is going to grow. That doesn't worry me at all. China being a bigger country does not scare me at all. A lot of people out there are scared by that. It's a lot of fear-mongering by politicians. Don't believe that. This, a good China is good for the world, guys. A good U.S. is good for the world. A good Africa is good for the world. Let's not get caught up in this xenophobic, we're the best, we have to remain the best. Guys, there are pluses to everything. And frankly, we are still better on a per person GDP by six times than China. But guess what? Their number is going to grow a lot faster than ours. Why? Because they're already poorer than us. Naturally, they're going to get faster. You know who's going to outpace them? India. You know who's going to outpace India? Africa. As you go down the line of poor and poorer, guess what's going to happen with the growth rates? They're going to grow faster and faster. As you get bigger and bigger, it's just like a company. Microsoft and Apple can't possibly grow as fast as a $1 billion company. It's just harder for the large ones to grow faster. Now, the real estate situation in China is a bit scary. The Chinese government did change how they allow developers to, to borrow money. And Evergrande is in a lot of trouble. But remember, guys, we were in a lot of trouble 15 years ago with real estate and our banking system. And guess what happened? We came out stronger. China will, will get through this in some way. How? I don't know. But... If you're going to bet long-term, will China be a better economy 20 years from now than today? I bet they probably will. That is my guess. Could I be wrong? Sure. Everybody thought Japan was taking over the world in the late 80s. The difference was Japan had already developed even further, and they were such a great developed country at that point. China is still developing. Right now, in the U.S., there are 735 billionaires. In China, there are 495. Yes, 
They have five times more people, but economically per person, we're six times larger. And they're almost at our heels for number of billionaires. Obviously, the rate of billionaires in the U.S. is a lot better than China because we have less people. But guys, everybody's so worried about this communist government and this communist economy. They have Hong Kong, guys. Hong Kong is a pillar of capitalism. The Hong Kong exchange is one of the biggest exchanges. We have billionaires, 495 billionaires as of April 2023 in China. This is amazing to me. To me, I look at it going, I don't care if they're communists. Guess what communists love? Come here. They love money. Communists love money. Go look at the revolutions in Russia. All the higher ups loved money. They lived a lavish life. It was the people who suffered. And I look at this chart right here and the people are getting better and better and better and better and better. In fact, 10 times better than just 20 years ago. 10 times better. In the US, we're two, two and a half times better than we were 20 years ago. But guess what? We're a much more mature economy. Now, going back to the Evergrande situation, here's what happened. Evergrande's a huge company. They don't just do real estate development. They have a lot of other businesses involved, but they expanded very aggressively. It's not even a 30-year-old business, but they had 1,300 projects in 280 cities. And a lot of those projects, people were buying ahead of time. So they were giving Evergrande money. Then China decided to change the way in which they let developers borrow money, which by the way, I don't think it's a bad thing. Now, I don't like the whole government intervention part, but the one thing I criticize about developers here in the States is they take on a lot of debt and they make their money off a lot of leverage. I don't personally like that. So when the rules changed, Evergrande had to massively discount properties in order to get more cash in the door to put his extra equity into their deals. Well, then what happens then? Then people are discounting, less money's going. At the end of the day, they're missing interest payments and they're defaulting on their loans. Now, you might sit there and say, oh, it's Evergrande, but guess what? How many development companies, how many construction companies, how many people rely on Evergrande? It is a big deal, absolutely a big deal, and it will have repercussions. They already filed for bankruptcy. There are major issues at Evergrande. The question is, like the 08 crisis, is Evergrande too big to fail? Now, again, I'm not supporting government bailouts of anything, but when assessing the situation, you have to ask yourself, would China allow this many businesses, this many people, because all the people who gave deposits, they lose those deposits because there are tons of projects that were never started and never finished. So what is a, what's a, unfortunately, an average person is going to do when they're buying a property and that happens to them. So the question is, is Evergrande too big to fail? Guys, they've already failed. This has already been a big cluster F. The question is, How much will the government intervene to protect its citizens who've already put money in, just like the U.S. did back in 07, 08, and 09 to protect its citizens? Now, also remember, guys, going back to my talk about GDP growth, this is one of the fastest growing middle classes in the world. You look at a company like Alibaba. They just reported 5% year-over-year increase in revenue. Doesn't sound like a lot, but they had a zero COVID policy, zero tolerance policy. They're coming out of that. There was a lot of headwinds for China in the last few years, and- If you have the gumption to sit there and look at those bad things as an opportunity, do your research. But I will say one thing. If you're too scared of China, don't invest. If you're too scared of understanding the numbers, don't invest. It's very important to invest in a certain country or company. You must feel comfortable with what you're doing. Now, if you're not comfortable buying an individual company, but you're comfortable investing in the area, find a Chinese ETF or index. Bet on that. Bet on the Shanghai index. Bet on the Hong Kong index. That's one way to get exposure without saying, I'm going to pick an individual company. But if you're that person who has the ability to sit there and say, you know what? Maybe it's overblown. It could very well not be overblown. Look at the financial crisis. Financial crisis started. It was looking bad. Some people might have said, ah, this is fine. It'll work its way through. And for a while there, it looked really, really bad and got even worse. That's probably going to continue with China because the issue is you can't possibly pick the bottom. I'm a long-term investor. I have a long-term investment in Alibaba. Don't go buy it just because I do. It's extremely important that you understand what you're buying. And I think that the price is being beaten down more than it needs to be. Could I be right? Yeah. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But in this situation, for me, the juice is worth the squeeze. Now, the most important question we're getting is, how could this affect the U.S. and the rest of the world? Guys, I will say this. China becoming a wealthier and wealthier country to me, just says one thing. We're probably not going to manufacture as much stuff in China as the world, as the years go on. We're going to have to find less expensive places to manufacture. That's already happening. 
Our, our other subsidiary companies, we import from China, we have, and we've started to move those to other countries over the last few years. Why? Because it was just cheaper. Because as people get wealthier, you can't produce as much. Look at the US. When the average person is making seventy seventy five thousand dollars a year, you cannot produce as much here in the U.S. You've got to go overseas. That's not a bad thing. I'd rather have us wealthier. Same thing with China. The biggest issue for me is that people have to remember that we're probably not going to buy much from China as time goes on. It'll decrease. It's already been shown. Mexico over surpassed China for a number one country that we import from. That just happened in the last few months. So guys. Don't be fearful of China. Don't be xenophobic. Don't be one of those people who just says, China sucks. Understand. And if you're able to look at it as an opportunity, it might be something that you'll be very, very happy you looked into later. Remember, guys, nothing's perfect. The U.S. has its own problems. I address that in this next video about the stock market. Thank you for your time.